Hello and welcome back. I am Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports and WeBuyGuns.com in Westfield, Indiana, and you are watching Marksman TV. Welcome back to another gun store vlog. Now, last week we did a video talking about how the prices of a lot of surplus firearms and the surplus market as a whole is definitely reaching new heights. And the pricing on a lot of those firearms is reaching levels that is becoming unobtainable for a lot of people who are more in the bargain seeker variety of consumers. However, there are a few holdouts still on the market, some really good deals that can still be found today in 2021. And today I'm gonna to highlight some of those firearms. If that sounds interesting to you, please stick around, that's coming up now. All right, so on the table in front of me, I have about six surplus firearms that I have available to me that do price in about the $300 range or lower. Now, some examples in these varieties may exceed $300 for like premium, you know, condition options. But by and large, if you're looking for something in good, fair, shootable range condition, you should be able to find all of these for under $300. So let's get started. The first one it comes from Yugoslavia, now Serbia, and it is the Yugoslavian Sestava Model 70, which is a 32 caliber pistol. That's how the magazine disconnect. Um, this would come into existence in the early 1970s, as the name would suggest, and this would be used for police and military service in Yugoslavia. It was basically based on the M57, the full-size uh, Tokarev variant, 762 by 55 but was chambered in the smaller caliber 32 automatic, 32 Browning, now this did have a fixed barrel. It was a straight blowback design. Um, really, really cool, really handy, very usable. Now these price today uh, on the surplus market between about, again, 200 to $250. So they are very affordable. Now some of the ones coming in today do have really, really large uh, rear target sights and they do have a little wedge that's been sort of grafted onto the left grip panel to give it more of a target or sport sporting purpose for importation. But you can of course take those off and put on the proper military components if you want to. There are earlier imports that already have the original sights and grips and stuff on them. Again, those are not very expensive. Should be able to find those in the low to mid 200. So really, really fun option. Again, if you want a small caliber and because of the price point, not only does it make a good collectible, but you could even conceal carry one of these, keep it as a backup, a truck gun, uh, a home defense firearm, again, if you're on a budget. It is a small caliber being a 32 automatic and the ammunition is not always easy to find. But again, for the price, it sort of doubles as a good collectible and a durable defensive firearm. Moving on to our next one, and this is one that you guys have seen in my most recent video. This is a Hungarian Feg PA-63. Now again, this would be inspired by the Walther PP and PPK pistols that came out of Germany in the Second World War. It does have a fixed barrel, it is a straight blowback, and it is chambered in the 9x18 Makarov. Now they did have a version in 32 as well as 380 called the AP-63, it was a commercial export version. Uh, and these are known for having a alloy uh, frame with aluminum and titanium. Uh, and it's sort of a bitone finish is where you mostly see them. They do have all black versions as well. These would have been manufactured by the Femeru plant as well as the FEG FEG plant in uh, Hungary. And of course, these would come into existence in the 1960s. So a good Cold War era based off of the very popular PP and PPK straight blowback design. You're gonna see a lot of firearms that fit this mold that sort of are called the collectively the Makarov family of pistols, although this really isn't a Makarov. The Makarov's coming out of Russia, being used by Russia, China, Germany, uh, as well as uh, Bulgaria. Uh, so again, those are climbing in value. So for something that does handle and have a similar fit and feel, uses the same caliber, this is a really good option. These right now on the market in really good condition could run yet again between about $200 and $250. These have been coming into the country for quite some time. So there are plenty of them out there. If you go to any gun shop, gun show, you should find a, a good variety of these available to you. You don't have to travel far to find one. Most of them are in good shape because of the aluminum aspect of the frame. They were never meant to be you know, shot to death by you know, when they were in military service. So a lot of them are very gently used and do make really, really good shooters. And again, because of their price point can double as a viable defensive carry option. Uh, spare magazines get a little bit pricey. I've seen them get upwards of over $40, but you can look around and find them for about the 30-ish if you look hard enough. So again, PA-63 out of Hungary from the 1960s, really good option. Now another one that's very similar to that, again, getting similar you know, stylization, similar uh, lineage, and this was also in a weekly used gun review video. This is a Czechoslovakian, now Czech Republic, 
uh, VZ Model 70, also chambered in 32 automatic. So a lot like uh, the Yugoslavian M70 came out in about that time frame. And again, this is very closely based off of the Walther PP and PPK firearms that came out of Germany in the 1930s and 1940s. It is a straight uh, blowback fixed barrel design. Disassembles just like a PP or a PPK, except instead of bringing down the trigger guard, you have a button release here, which in my opinion is a better system. This was the updated version from a 1950s model. Does fire in double or single action with a full steel frame design with a thumb safety over here on the left hand side of the pistol. Really, really nice, durable and rugged handguns. Again, you're gonna be in that smaller 32 caliber uh, package uh, the ammunition is not as easy to find as 3.8 or 9 millimeter under normal conditions, and it is a little bit anemic, you know, by most people's standards. But for something that, again, this will run you about the two to $250 range, not very expensive, very rugged, robust, easy to stow away in a truck, again, a tackle box, you want to take it camping, keep it as a secondary or a backup, or if you want to scratch that surplus edge and keep it as a collectible, again, these things are all sure to increase in value in the future. Uh, this is always one that I've personally really liked, and out of any of the clones of the PP or the PPK, this one, in my opinion, really stays the closest in, term, in terms of the ergonomics design and feel. So really, really cool pistol. That is the Czechoslovakian VZ Model 50. I'm sorry, the Model 70. Another one that can't, comes out of Czechoslovakia or Czech Republic today is the VZ Model 52 or CZ Model 52. A lot of people will call it the CZ Model 52. Technically, it's the VZ Model 52 as it did see military service. Um, not to be confused with the rifle variant of the same name, okay, this is a 762 by 25 which came about into Czechoslovakia military service in the 1950s. Now these were only produced for a couple years and only about 200,000 of these were made, although they would stay in Czech military service until the early 1980s, being replaced by the Czechoslovakian, uh, the CZ model 82, and then the 83 is the commercial export version in 380. Now the CZ-82 would be when most of those countries in Eastern Europe, the Comblock would go to the 9mm Makarov, the 9x18, thus abandoning the 7.62x25, which is what this is chambered in. This is known for being a very, very large handgun for what it is. Uh, not a very high capacity. I believe these fit about eight rounds, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but very, very large, very bulky. But because of the higher pressure around the 7.62x25, these are actually really enjoyable to shoot. It is a single action only with a thumb safety on the left hand side. Now there's not a lot of practical application for something like this today due to its heft and size. Although you could argue the fact that it is about, I mean it's a little bit bigger, but similar in weight to a 1911, uh, which is also between seven and eight rounds. The 762 by 25 is no slouch. It is a very high velocity, very hot round. Um, so, you know, you could get something like this for defensive purposes or a home defense firearm. They're very reliable, very rugged and durable, but most people are going to be gravitating towards these more as a collectible. Again, coming out of the 1950s and 60s, sort of the pre to post Cold War era, uh, where it would stay in service. Uh, really, really unique curiosity as a, of a firearm because there's really nothing quite like it. Uses a, a roller locking system. Really unique and interesting. Now on the market today, these are creeping up for the most part between about three to four hundred dollars where you see most of them. You can find them in shootable but rough finish condition for under three if you look hard enough. Uh, most of these in really good condition will run between, uh, you know, I'd say between three and five hundred dollars. So this is a little bit of the high end of this segment. But again, if you look hard enough, it's still not difficult to find one for three hundred or less. Again, it's just going to be a little bit rough on the finish. But regardless of that, still fun to own and shoot and very collectible as well. Now, another one that's very often overlooked by people that is, in my opinion, when it comes to surplus, one of the best bargains out there on the market are the Star Pistols, the A series, the B series, um, that are very much based off of the 1911. Does not have a grip safety like a 1911 does, but it is single action, has a very similar safety and trigger if we compare it to the standard model 1911, not the A1, but very, very obviously takes a lot of its, you know, design elements from the Browning design of the 1911 pistol. The ergonomics are almost identical. So if you are used to a 1911, you would feel right at home on these. Most of these are a nine millimeter Luger. You can also get them a nine millimeter Largo. This is a nine millimeter Largo, which is a longer casing. Um, 
very, very accurate, very reliable pistols. Now, a few years ago, a bunch of these Star Model BM, which were these small variations of this, came into the market, and you could find those for $180. Now, those have crept up to about 200-ish, maybe a hair over 250. The full-size versions like this, and this particular one is a Model A Super uh, in 9mm Largo, these have been in the country for a while, and they are getting up a little bit higher, closer to about the 300 range, maybe a hair over 300, 300 to 400 if they're in really good condition. Um, but if you get it in a fair, shootable condition, you should have no problem finding these for 300 or less, or especially the Star BM. Again, if you think of it more of an officer size, it's a much smaller version, more compact like that. Um, you should be able to find those on the market as well. So a really, really cool option. Next up, and actually the last on the table, is a series of rifles that come out of Italy. And these have been coming in recently. These are the Carcano rifles. Uh, this particular one is the M91 Cavalry model. Uh, and it is in the Carcano cartridge, a 6.5 Carcano. Uh, this one here, right here is the M91 TS, the Troop Special, Troop Special, or however you would say that in Italian. Um, really, really cool carbines. And they had this third version. These were the three that had come in. This was the M91 24 TS. It's just like the other TS carbine, but it had the barrel band. I believe that the, the 24s are actually cut down. I need to, to look back into that. Um, but again, really, really cool Italian Carcano carbines. Now, the interesting thing about this, and we've talked about surplus on the channel, of course, including last week on the gun store vlog, is when surplus comes into the country, it is available and therefore very inexpensive. Now, Carcanos of all stripes, whether it was the M38 Carcano uh, carbines or the, you know, the later uh, 40s variants or the, or the early World War I variant rifles that had come into the country over the previous decades, used to be very inexpensive. You could find these you know, anywhere from $100 to $300 as recently as you know, 2015, 2016, and then they seem to dry up and the pricing skyrocketed. I told this story before, but I had shot a M38 Carcano carbine at a range, it belonged to a friend, and this was two or three years ago, maybe two years ago, and I decided I wanted to find one, so I went on Gun Broker and other marketplaces to try and find one, and all of them were exceeding $600, you know, all day long, which I thought was crazy because five or six years ago, I had seen them for $300. Of course, they dry up, the prices escalate. I didn't end up picking one up, and I'm glad I didn't because last year, within about the past year, year and a half, all of these started flooding the market, again, in these three configurations. This, to me, is the most interesting, the cavalry carbine with the bayonet on it. And they were selling for about $250. Now, there are still several of these in stock at different places, and I think their retail price, some of them have gone up to about a little over three, like 320 to 350. Some of them are still sticking around 280. I know not all three of these variants are available right now, but again, right now as it stands, you can pick these up for between two to $300 in most cases. If you're interested in surplus, I know the ammunition is not exactly that easy to find because of all of these flooded the market, the stripper clips have dried up. This does take a six round uh, clip, which is inserted and you can't really use it without that clip unless you single load it. Um, but the, um, you know, as a collectible, as a surplus firearm, just to keep in the collection, if you're into that sort of thing, this is definitely one worth not passing up on because I can almost guarantee you based on the past when these this supply is all dried up, again, two, three, four years from now, these will probably be pressing over $600 again. So anyway, I wanted to do that quick video for you guys just to highlight some of the surplus firearms that I still know are out there at affordable prices. For those people who are interested in surplus, mainly as a way to get into fun, shootable, collectible firearms at a good bargain price without paying some of the exorbitantly high price tags that some surplus firearms are now demanding. Again, history has taught us when it comes to the surplus market, when the availability dries up, the pricing is gonna escalate. So anyway, just wanted to throw that uh, variety out there for you guys. Hopefully you can get out there and find some of these if you didn't already know that they existed. I'm gonna leave you off with that information. If you have any questions, let me know by leaving those below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and also consider subscribing to my channel so you are aware when I'm putting out videos like this. I'm gonna leave you off with that. I am Chris with Marksman Shooting Sports and WeBuyGuns.com in Westfield, Indiana. You are watching Marksman TV and I will see you next time.